No evidence of a crime? Oh, man. What's up, y'all? It's your boy Pascal back at it again with another pop up video. Be sure to follow me on all my social medias, The Pascal Show, one word. Hit that like button down below. And let's not forget to crush that subscribe button if you're watching on YouTube. And if you're watching on Facebook, make sure you crush that follow button on my Facebook page if this is your first time checking out this channel right here. Anyway, we got to jump into this story. This could be bad news. Very, very bad news in regards to this case. And the case that I'm talking about, and we've talked about this before, but that of Netflix software engineer, Johannes Kadane. He is 22 years old. He's from New York. He moved out to San Jose for this job at Netflix just a few weeks prior to him missing. This particular Monday night, he jumped into his Uber ride, his ride share, and he disappeared. He was never heard from or seen ever again. Only a few hours or a little bit later, his family were able to locate his cell phone, his wallet, his bag, which also had two laptops in them, inside of it, right by the Golden Gate Welcome Center at the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. Now, there's a lot of people that are wondering what is going on here. There have been some developments, and these developments are not so great. I, I got to be honest. I'm not extremely happy about hearing this because they said there is no crime in the disappearance. There's no evidence of crime in the disappearance of Netflix software engineer Johannes Kadane. And in my mind, this can only say one thing. This can only lead us down one path right now. Because if they're saying that there's no foul play, that he wasn't taken against his will, he wasn't dragged kicking and screaming, there's no evidence of that, it only leads us down one path. And it's still very, very bad. But I still got questions. It doesn't mean that this is over. They're obviously going to be doing more in investigation into this case. But right now, they haven't seen anything yet. But we got some things to talk about. So let's get into this article. So the ongoing investigation into missing Johannes Kadane has found no evidence of crime, according to the cops. Despite the family's fears over a recent strange encounter he had on a rideshare trip. So let's talk about this rideshare trip that he had a few days before. OK, so according to his GoFundMe account, days before he went missing, Kadane had a quote unquote strange encounter with an Uber driver while he tried to get to San Jose from San Francisco. He was trying to come back home on that ride. OK, he said that he told his friends that the driver insisted on taking him through Oakland and Kadane, suspicious of his intentions, was able to cancel, cancel the ride after crossing the San Francisco-Oakland Bay Bridge. So after this whole ordeal, he expressed that basically he ain't ever riding in any Uber anytime soon, according to this GoFundMe that has been made, all right? And of course, on their GoFundMe, they're trying to raise over up to about $100,000 $100, because, of course, this is going to be a very big investigation if it goes down the route of maybe they have to search, maybe they have to search bodies of water and the surrounding areas around the Golden Gate Bridge. We got to be honest. It, we got to be real and realistic about this. And it looks like that is probably where they're going to be heading down here in just a minute. But one of the things I do have to ask, let's talk about this ride share really quick. The, the weird, strange encounter that he had. Let's talk about that really quick. Number one. Where's the footage inside that car? Is there footage from inside that strange rideshare that he had? Because the question I have is, could he have had a mental health break? Could he have had a psychotic break inside that Uber ride that made him maybe a, a, a little bit more paranoid uh, and made him go, oh, no, no, I don't trust this guy. Now, don't get me wrong. Let me say this, too. We've all had our fair share of weird experiences in ride shares or in taxis and whatnot, okay? On a, on a subway or any type of public transportation, we've all had a weird experience at least once in our life, okay? If you use, if you use public transportation, I'm sure you have, all right? So I'm not sitting here saying that his experience wasn't strange, but it does make you wonder if there was any signs of his mental health if he was showing any signs of paranoia, depression, et cetera, 
And if they have footage from that ride share, they need to get that. And hopefully law enforcement have the possession of that ride share video as well. But I say that for the other ride share as well. What was his demeanor before he left, before he got out of that ride share? Because allegedly he did complete the ride. So that is just something else that I have to ask. But Let's get into this. Let's get into the rest of this article here really quick. San Jose gave the San Jose police gave the update Monday, a week after the 22-year-old New York man went missing after taking another Uber despite fears he just had that he expressed that he had just two days prior. But I get it. Sometimes you just got to brave it and keep going, right? You know, what are the chances of lightning? The weirdness striking twice right? In the same place. But they say the investigation has uncovered no evidence to suggest that a crime has occurred, which obviously to me translates like he may have done something on his own, if you get what I'm saying. And that's terrible, terrible news. San Jose, uh, San Jose detectives have kept Mr. Kadani's family advised of all pertinent developments in this case, the case will remain open until Johannes is located. Now, we already know that he was last seen in surveillance footage, leaving his apartment, getting into a black Toyota sedan Uber bound for San Francisco late August 14th. Now, I keep wondering, what was his reason of going to San Francisco again? Remember, his weird ride share, the strange ride that he had, was when he was leaving San Francisco, going to San Jose. But then two days later, he's on another ride share back up to San Francisco. So I'm wondering what made him go up there and what made him go back there again two days later. There are some theories out there, and I'll explain those in just a minute. But we got to talk about also, how did the family get his phone? How did that all come down? Because you got to remember, his phone was located, all of his belongings, his cell phone, his wallet, his bag, book bag filled with the stuff that he uses for work were all found at the Welcome Center or the Golden Gate Bridge Welcome Center. You got to wonder, was it placed there or did he place it there? So Yosef, his brother, told Dateline that on Monday, August 14th, their sister was checking Yo Johannes's location and noticed it changed. Somewhere around 8 p.m., she saw his phone location at the Golden Gate Bridge, which wasn't anything out of the ordinary, Yosef said. Now, I want to say that, which wasn't anything out of the ordinary, Yosef said. Figured he could have been meeting a friend or like, checking it out or with some, with maybe work people or something. The Golden Gate Bridge, the Golden Gate Bridge is more than an hour away from his apartment. It's an hour away from his apartment, guys. By the next morning, which is Tuesday, August 15th, when Johannes's location still showed as being at the Golden Gate Bridge, his brother said his sister started to panic. She'd been calling, trying to see what he was doing. He never picked up. She calls me, Johannes' brother, wakes me up before I start work, and I start. we start calling his phone, calling friends, trying to see where he could be. No one had heard from Johannes. Yosef said that they later saw that the location of Johannes' phone started moving, so they called it. Yosef, the brother, said a stranger picked up and said that he had found the phone and Johannes' wallet, including cash, card, and ID at the Golden Gate Bridge Welcome Center. He said he would help us uh, get them back to Johannes so that so we focused our efforts on actually finding out where he was, he said. Johannes told Dateline that they called the San Jose Police Department to conduct a wellness check at, at their brother's apartment, but he wasn't there. Main questions that I have here. Because now they're saying that there's no evidence of crime. So obviously there's no sign of a struggle or anything of that sort. I'm wondering, what about security camps? Golden Gate Bridge most definitely has security camps. 
I'm sure the the welcome center for the Golden Gate Bridge has security cameras as well. There's got to be footage showing what were Johannes's last few moments before he disappeared. I'm still holding on hope that he's okay. I'm still holding on hope that he is still alive and breathing because anything's possible here. There could have been a psychological break within Johannes. He talks about a strange ride share that he had two days before. By the way, this is after him coming back from San Francisco. One of the questions I have is, why did he go to San Francisco? What was the real reason? Was he up there to meet up with friends for real? Or was he scoping a location out? Inquiring minds would like to know. I hate to say it like that, but that's the question that I have in my mind. We need, or law enforcement really need to see as much as the of the footage as they can. And maybe that is the reason why they're saying that there is no evidence of crime. Maybe they already combed through all surveillance footage showing him being fine. Maybe he did show up in that area and he was doing just fine. And then suddenly he just walks off camera. That is very, very possible here, guys. We have a young man still missing. This is still a missing case. Maybe he didn't, maybe he wasn't taken, but he did disappear. And this is the reason why I'm bringing up his name. We need to continue to hashtag his name. We need to continue to put his name out there so that maybe someone's out there sees this young man. Maybe he just went for a just disappeared into the woods. Maybe he did disappear into the water. But the investigation isn't over. And we ain't done doing our investigation and talking about this story until this young man gets brought back home, period. They say there's no evidence of crime, sure. But they've only been looking into this for only so long. Anything's possible. As they start to unearth more clues and they start to expose more truths on this particular case. So let's get Johannes Kadane back home and back home safely if we can. Anyway, guys, that's the video. Comment down below. Let me know what your thoughts are. All right. Don't forget to hit that like button down below and definitely hit that subscribe button and hit that follow button on my Facebook page. It'd be great to have you a part of the Pascal Show family. Anyway, it's time to get going. Be good to yourselves. Be good to one another. And I'll see you guys in the next video. This is the Pascal Show. Bye. P-A-S-C-A-L. You are now rocking with that dude, Pascal. We be going wild.